Yeah, quickly, uh, let me quickly just uh, give you a brief word of God this morning and then I'll do some ministry. Is that okay? I trust God that I'll be able to go through to this service today. As I move from here, I'll be going to number nine. Then from number nine, I'll be moving to New Amsterdam. But guess what? The Lord is our strength, amen? amen. And th this morning, I want to continue from the place I, I stopped the last time. Because the word of God is very important. The word of God is very important. Say neighbor. The word is very important. The word is very important. You see, miracles, healing, you know, deliverance, and you shout and fall down. Yes, that's okay. That's good. But it will not last. Because when you are going through tribulations, what will sustain you is the word of your spirit. Amen. And it pains me to see that a lot of people are still not interested in the word. All they want is miracles. They want prophecy. They want healing. They want deliverance. Which is, is, that, is, 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 that's your portion. That's your portion. But the greater portion is having the word of God in your spirit. Amen. 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 But say everything will pass away. But the word will not pass until it's been fulfilled. That's right. Amen. That's why it's important for you and I to catch the word. Say, the word. Catch the word. Catch the word. So I was happy to understand the last time about conditions to activate divine satisfaction. And I told you that one of the conditions is abiding in God's presence and his word. So I was happy to understand as we went through the book of John chapter 15, verse 1 to 7 and verse 11. But suffered me to say again that I had to, you know, uh, 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 do some certain things just to make sure that you understand what I call foundational truth. I'm saying that you coming into Christ is not just changing your legal status. Let me go back so that some, some of you will understand where we're coming from. In the book of John chapter 15, verse number 3, the Bible says, Yea, I clean through the word. Somebody say clean. Clean. Through the word. Through the word. Now understand this. You are clean through the word. word. Amen. Jesus informs them that he has already made them clean. Yes. Why is that important for you as a believer? Say, I have made you clean to the word. And I say just that the important thing for you to get is what? The word. I would say the word. The word. Because without cleansing, we will be living and operating in condemnation, which limits our power and our ability to live in victory. Hear me now, please. What I'm teaching right there is foundational truth. Until you understand the level of your cleansing, you'll be living in condemnation of what God has for you. Yes. Many believers today, you are, you're, you're not enjoying your Christian life because you are living in condemnation. My God. So Jesus had to approach them and say, hey, you are clean by the word I spoke to you. When you receive salvation, the word that you receive is the word that brings cleansing to your spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I want to help you to understand that. Amen. 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 So it says, John 3, verse 3 says, Now you are clean through the word. So I told you, it's a statement of legal status. He wanted them to understand their right in the kingdom of God. Many believers today don't understand their right in the kingdom of God. Right. So the devil can talk to you and announce certain things and you believe it. Come on, yeah. Are you following me somebody? Yes. So he follows it with a command. He says, abide in me and I in you. In verse 4. 
abide in me and what? And I in you. The word abide, I say, is a verb, it's active. In other words, it's not something you turn on and you turn off whenever you want. Hello? Hi. Abiding in God is not to turn off a switch. That's right. <laughs> so whenever you like it, you turn off the switch. And you turn it off, you turn it on back. So I hear you. I hear you. It's not something you do for only a certain season due to a spiritual turbulence. Meaning for we only turn on when we are going through some spiritual turbulence. When things are going wrong in our life, that we run to God. It's called spiritual turbulence. Sometimes I hear you. Again, what I'm saying to you is this. Abiding in Christ is not a feeling That's or a belief, right. but something we do consistently, constantly, consciously, and conscientiously. Sometimes I hear you. I hear you. It means to, to remain or to stay. Say the neighbor. Never. Remain, Remain or you stay. Or you stay. It also entails far more than just continue to believe in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, in verse 5, it, it, it illustrates this abiding relationship with a power relationship of a vine and a branch. It says in verse 5, I'm the vine and you are the branches. I brought you this for you because I've, I've done this before. I'm the vine and you are what? The branches. And you are what? The branches. Say neighbor. neighbor. We, are the we are the branches. Say we are the branches. We are the branches. It means we the branches are to be connected to who? To him, the vine. Amen. So that our life, our sustenance can be guaranteed. Somebody say amen. Amen. Because only in him can we be a fruit. That's right. In verse 6. He said, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are born. Someone said, that's not me. That's not me. Verse 7. He said, but if you abide in me, I want to, I want to bring this, this two verse for you. Verse 6 and verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. Someone said, hear you. If you watch carefully, in verse 6, in verse 6, he warned the disciples or the apostles. He warned them. He says, if you don't obey or abide in me, the consequence will be very devastating. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. Do, do you observe now in verse 7? He moves the message again now from fruit bearing to prayers. In verse 6, he said, if you don't abide in me, okay, in verse 5, sorry, in verse 5, say, I'm the vine, you are the branches. So, that speaks about fruit. Yes. Hello? Hi. I'm the vine, and you are what? Branches. So, that's what about bearing fruit. But in verse number 7, it says, if you abide in me, and I abide in you, it says, you shall ask. So, it must not from fruit bearing, So you hearing me right there. Are you following me? Yes. From fruit bearing out of prayers. That's why I want to show you two very important conditions for answer prayer. Otherwise, many of you, you are praying and you are praying in vain. Come on now. Are you following me? Yes. I want to write this for you today. Two very important conditions. It means, therefore, the condition of a prevailing prayer is to abide in Christ. Amen. Again, if you abide in me, in verse 7, you shall ask whatever, Amen. and it shall be done what? Unto you. Amen. That's a blank check. That's a what? A blank check. So he said, I give you a blank check. Oh my God. Come on. But this blank check can only be used if you abide in me. Amen. If you stay in me. Amen. If you remain in me, Amen. not today or tomorrow, no. If you stay in me, that's a check in your hand. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of you don't understand what I'm saying right now. That's a check in your hand that some of you don't even know. After 
after this message, some of you, you'll be making some bold statements. You'll be making some bold demands. Because you know that the check in your hand is able to cover it all. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you following me, somebody? Yes. Amen. So, he reminds us the condition of a prevailing prayer is to abide in Christ. In verse 7 again, if you abide in me, follow me now, and my words abide in you. So here, Jesus deals with two very important conditions for answered prayer. Yes. That we guarantee your maximum satisfaction in any area of your life. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. So the first, he said, number one, if you abide in me. Second, he says, if my words abide in you. Those two are conditions for answer prayer. Watch this. Let me deal with the first one. If you abide in me. Someone say if. If. Hello. Come on are you tracking with me? Are you tracking with me? We are... Come on, we are teaching this this morning. The first condition to the promise of answer prayer is to abide in me. Or to keep fellowshipping with the Lord active. Amen, amen. To abide means to keep your fellowship active. Amen. It's not to sit down and just watch pastor preach. Hello, is to make sure that you you have some level of activity doing in God's kingdom. That's right, Amen, Amen. If you have nothing doing, the enemy will give you something to do. <laughs> uh, this is going to be deep now. This is going to be deep now. I'm going to make some statement very soon. Yeah. So we see here. It means those who genuinely abide in Christ will pray according to God's will. Lord, amen. If you abide in me, the word if, I would say if, if. that word if is a probability and a choice. Yes. It's a choice. Amen. That's to say you decide if you want your prayer answered or not. That's right. Say neighbor. Neighbor. You decide, you decide. If you want your prayer answered or not. If you want your prayer answered. It's not God. You decide. If you abide in me. Kapata Bahosha. In other words. Jesus is saying. The longer it takes for you and I. To abide in him. The longer it takes for him. To answer your, your prayers. Prayer. Come on now. So, in this context here, Jesus uses the, this metaphor to explain how our spiritual life as born again believers is drawn from his life. If you abide in me, if you abide in me, so it's helping us to understand that as a spiritual being, as a believer, as a Christian, you know, you have no life except the life of Christ. That's right. Amen. So, it's not here what I'm saying. Amen. Paul said, the life I live now, I live unto Christ. Follow me now. So, what I'm saying here is this. God's intent for our lives is to progress from barrenness to fruitfulness and from spiritual dryness to spiritual abundance. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. Remember, the word to abide is a verb. It's active. Abiding in Christ is not, is not a feeling or a belief, but something we do. To abide means, I'm happy to understand that word. To abide means to remain stable or to stay in place or fix in a state. That's right. Amen. Because the key to you of having satisfaction in Christ is this word abide. Unless you understand this word abide, you will not have a joyful Christian life. So the key word here is abide. It means to take up residence. 
I don't have time to preach this word. I'm just giving you <laughs> to what? Take to take up what? Residence. To take up what? Residence. To take up what? Residence. When I came to Guyana, I came as an immigrant. I was migrating. That's right. Hmm? And then I discovered God wants me to be planted here. So I apply for residency. So right now, I'm resident in Guyana. Even though I was born in Nigeria. That's why some people, some people right now, they cannot, they cannot handle my case. Because they wonder how he come from Africa and come to take I'm happy to understand the word residence. To a bad means to, to, to take up residence. It means you have make up your mind that this is where I will stay. Whether the devil like it or not, whether they attack me or not, I made up my mind that in Christ alone is my place. I will stand. I will ask my faith. I don't care what happens to my body. I make up my mind that I will stay in God. That's why, even though they might not like me here, I've taken up residence. Whether they're jealous or not, that can stop me. I'm a resident. I'm a bona fide qualified Guyanese. I'm 100% Guyanese. Because I know who I am. Please understand this. When you understand that, I guarantee you, you'll be satisfied. To abide means to take up. It means to be planted in a particular place with God. Uh, when you take up residence in the kingdom of God, you are planted. Somebody say you are planted. You are planted. Say the boy, you are planted. You are planted. You see, why abide? Why do I need to abide, Bishop? Because unless you are planted and rooted in the place, you can never have satisfaction in that place. Let me help you to understand this. So years ago when I came to Guyana, I hated the place. Sister Molly, I don't like it for nothing. Because to me it was just backward nation. And God says, unless you begin to understand, I brought you all the way just to point you here. You will never have the benefit of what is happening. You see, please understand this. Many of you, you will never be satisfied unless you are planted and rooted in that place. That's why many of you today, you don't enjoy your own home because you're not planted. When I see people complain about a church, because you are not planted in that church, when you are planted a root, nothing disturbs your mind, nothing turns you away, because you know I will planted a root by God. Amen. 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 You will never receive the blessing of a place until you are planted and rooted. Hallelujah. That's why we have a lot of believers today. They are moving from place to place. Unless you are planted, you will never receive. Hear me? Every house has a blessing. Every family has a blessing. The problem is you are not planted. Say, neighbor, are you planted? 